Amazon Prime, a service that I use to get socks delivered to me four hours after I order them, because my need for socks is urgent, and Amazon gets that about me. But what they don't tell you is that when you buy Amazon Prime, you're also getting access to an absolute gold mine of hilariously bad content. Up until this month, I hadn't investigated Prime Video, and let me just say, I am glad that I did. <laughs> With it being October, I wanted to try and find a terrible, low-budget horror movie to make fun of, but as soon as I started looking in the horror movie section, something caught my eye. Christmas Crime Story, a movie that Amazon markets as a suspense horror action drama. Now, it's well documented on this channel that I love terrible Christmas movies, so I was immediately pretty intrigued. Instead of making a video about a horror movie and then making another video about a Christmas movie, I could just do it all in one. How efficient. Anyways. Let's watch Christmas Crime Story. The movie opens with what I can only describe as a horror cover of Silent Night. Silent night, holy night. All these low-budget Christmas movies use these weird genre covers of Christmas songs. Who makes these? I'm imagining like a sweatshop with like tired, beaten down composers being punished because they haven't made enough smooth jazz covers of Jingle Bell Rock. So anyways, we're introduced to this guy, Chris, who looks like he's gonna be our protagonist. He's like a Christmas cop. Like he's a cop, but he's extremely enthusiastic about Christmas. We're talking about a guy who carries around and aggressively offers people candy canes out of his shirt pocket. Hey, you want a candy cane? No, oh, man. Oh, come on. No, no, no. I'm going in. How's Julia? Well, she loves Christmas. Because tomorrow, somebody who knows her is gonna have a very unmerry Christmas. Shut the fuck up about Christmas, we get it. So Chris makes his way to this diner where this Santa has set up outside. The way that Santa's standing, it looks like, it looks like he's got lumbar lorbosis or whatever it's called. And he runs into this guy on his way in. Oh, whoa, 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 God damn! You'll be all right. Take it easy next time. Won't be a next time. The way that he's like holding and rotating that camera, it's like he's never seen it before. So Chris is here to see his mom, who he seems to have like a pretty strained relationship with. It seems like they haven't talked in a while. Evening. What can I get for you? Christopher. Hey, Mom. What are you really doing here? I just wanted to say... Merry Christmas, Mom. Oh my god, that's all you say to anyone! The two of them start arguing about Chris's dad, who's dead. I guess there was some sort of drama with Chris's dad. They never really make it clear. Just because you won't let me forget what I did wrong, doesn't mean that I don't spend every day wishing I could change it. But I can't go back in the past, Mom. And I've come to accept that. Why can't you? Oh, I thought he was gonna pull out a gun. <laughs> anyway, after he leaves this envelope, Chris gets mad and he goes back to being a cop. No, Chris, wait! He's like so unwilling to forgive the mom. Like he wants nothing to do with her, but it's like, you went to go see her. You went and looked for her. And now you're like, I gotta go to work, mom. So now that he's back on duty, he pulls over this guy who has like an entire evidence locker in his back seat. You know how fast you're going? Uh, no. Could have killed somebody. Something funny? No, no, sir. He's got a bloody axe and a shovel in those. his bag seat. It's like, why did you just put the guy's fucking corpse back there, oh, man? Those, uh, why don't you throw a signed confession right. back there? And then after he hears something suspicious in his trunk, he goes to investigate. What was that? Uh, I don't know. Pop the trunk. Now! Yes, sir. Now! Yes, sir. Yeah, I guess he was not our protagonist after all. So this is where the movie reveals its big trick. It's told in non-chronological order. It's sort of like Memento or Pulp Fiction, but it sucks ass. So this whole next section of the movie focuses on this guy who killed Chris. His name is David. He's arguing with his girlfriend, Sasha, about some 
Bullshit. Sasha Harrington Carlisle. Jeez. I sound like I was born with a silver spoon up my ass. You want to switch? No, I just want to be equal. That is a very aggressive method of caroling. Just staring into the window, caroling at the people inside the building. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Fuck. <laughs> Why were his lips pursed so much? He was like... Would you like some uh, food, dessert? I think we'll need a minute or two. Oh, okay. Just let me know. Where are these light sources? It looks... Did they green screen them onto the city background? Was this shot, like, too dangerous to film in real life? So, hot chocolate? Yes. Okay. They start singing hot chocolate from the Polar Express into the windows of the diner. The argument between David and Sasha escalates, and he tells her that he knows that she's been cheating on him, and then she tries to kill him, but uh, he pulls out the old Uno reverse card and kills her instead. And at this point in the movie, I was kind of shocked, because, like, this dude can kind of act. When I told you I loved you, it wasn't bullshit. But you never loved me, did you? Why is this man giving, like, the performance of a lifetime? I just feel like this guy is is giving a pretty good performance. And then like the movie around him is like a guy dinking around on like a spooky Christmas xylophone. Anyway, he kills her and his buddy from the bar is gonna help him hide the body. Snap out of it, we got work to do. First things first, okay? You can't stay out here in this heat like this. Or you're gonna need a fucking IV to replace all the fluids you lost. Did, did you piss yourself? Where you going? Probably to get the piss out of his pants. Yeah, that's nice. Are you fucking crazy? Ha! <laughs> Alrighty. I'm not chopping her up. So look, we'll go. That was God, that was an extremely jarring tonal shift. <laughs> they were just talking about chopping up this dead woman with an axe, and then it comes back, there's like harp music playing. Oh, and this was the point in the movie where I felt like I was having a brain aneurysm. Better slow down. You're driving okay, a little too fast. Wasn't he just fast. eating a blue lollipop? Yeah. You're driving yeah. too fast, okay? What? Are they doing this on purpose? The color of the color of the lollipop keeps changing back and forth. Is he like sucking all the dye out and then like spitting it back onto the lollipop? I can't fucking believe okay. it. You're distracting me. Oh my god. Shut the fuck up. Oh jeez. I get it. Why, why wouldn't they just use the same color of lollipop for all of them? Like, why wouldn't they just get a lot of the blue ones? That way they could do multiple takes and it wouldn't keep fucking changing colors. So they get pulled over by Chris, like we saw before. And then, this shit gets even wilder. It's pretty cool, man. We're not going to jail. You are if they find that fucking body. I'm not going to jail. Hence, we're not going to jail. Get it? A fucking candy cane. They, they knew what they were doing. Shut up. You shut up. What? Turn the vehicle off, please. Yes, sir. Did he, did he, fuck, where'd he go? Oh, I guess I was wrong. The, the diner. I said there wasn't going to be a next time. You know how fast oh. you were going? What? No. <laughs> hey. Is this man a powerful sorcerer? How is he just shifting through realities like this? Slow your roll, Mr. Police Officer. Close only counts in horseshoes, grenades, and nuclear war. <laughs> Something funny? No, sir. Oh, shit. Yo. Fuck. I gotta admit, I... I did not see that coming. It's like they used the production errors from the beginning of the movie to trick me into thinking it was all an accident, and then they hit me with this shit. Good job, movie. All right, I'll applaud you for that. Yeah, I have to give the movie credit, if I'm being honest. The twist that friendo big lips guy here was not actually real, that was kind of well done. But okay, at the same time, why is this man's crack ghost 
like rapidly cycling through different things to suck on. So just so it's clear, Lips guy is just like David's hallucination. Oh my God. So the two of them are driving away after killing Chris. Hey, so there was like thumping coming from the trunk back there. What was that? Are you, <laughs> are you sure she's actually dead? Isn't that kind of the problem that needs to get solved first here? David has like an emotional breakdown and like tries to banish Lips guy back to the shadow realm and it kind of works. Maybe one day things will change, but they won't until you give me some space. Just for a while, okay? Just for a while. Oh my god, my my man is putting his whole soul into this performance. You gotta understand, this is going on prime video. I just feel like this is not gonna be appreciated. The movie then jumps backwards again to show us Sasha's story. She's meeting at the same diner with this dude who looks extremely cool. You're late. You're looking at the outside of the pocket watch. And it was at this point that I suffered my second brain aneurysm of the evening. Dude, whatever. Are you the guy or not? I don't got time for this shit. I'm the guy. Never shake the devil's hand. What? Never shake the devil's hand. Huh? Never shake the devil's hand. The devil's snow? Never shake the devil's hand. What are you saying? If anybody knows what that guy was trying to say, let me know. She's trying to pay this guy to kill David, and they're arguing over the price for like a fucking eternity. I'm your client, and you work for me. Not till I take your money, I don't. Jesus I'm Christ, this conversation has been going on for like 10 minutes. Sasha is blackmailing this dude Jason into stealing money so that she can pay this guy so that he can kill David. And Jason comes in, and he drops off the money, and then he leaves. You are delusional! So then the movie starts telling us yet another story, this time about this dude, Randy. It's Randall. He's just been fired from his job as Santa. The forlorn piano cover of God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, of course. He has a heated exchange with his boss. I'm serious, man. If you mess that up, I'm gonna have to send you the bill, all right? You know what? You don't like what I'm doing to your precious little fucking outfit? Then you go ahead and bill me on your body on clearance and sears face fucking throat. And he drives away. What is it about this time of year? Okay, once again, guy who was responsible for the soundtrack, did you watch the movie that you were putting this in? Did you see what scene it was going in? How did that get in there? Randall has a daughter, and because this is a low-budget Christmas movie, his daughter unfortunately has a serious illness, and Randall's never going to be able to pay off those hospital bills now that he's not Santa anymore, so he drives to a liquor store. It's unclear if he planned on, like, robbing the liquor store. Like, he didn't have a gun, so I don't really know how he would have done that, but right as he's about to walk in, Jason, from earlier, walks out. Hey. Why would you pick that? Why would you pick that up? <laughs> oh fuck, is this a gun? So Randall gets arrested, obviously, because the cops were already there the entire time, and they find him with a gun and they arrest him. Stand up, it wasn't me. You got a name? Yeah, Randall. Randall Edwards, but you got the wrong guy. I swear I wasn't robbing the goddamn store. Yeah, just like it wasn't your goddamn gun. It's Come on not, I don't even believe in him. Listen to me. I don't even believe in guns. They don't fucking exist. I've never seen a gun before. I guess maybe that is why he was so curious when he saw it on the ground. He's like, holy shit, I, I didn't think those were real. He came out and he took off and then you guys showed up. You got a description of this guy? You wanna maybe try that line read one more time? So Randy's going downtown. Don't call me Randy. The movie then jumps backwards yet again to show us Jason's story. His story is pretty straightforward. He goes to rob this liquor store for Sasha and the cashier lady is like instantly just like best friends with him for some reason. 
Maybe you're looking for a little pick me up. Not like that, you perv. No, no, I'm okay. Come on, it's on me. Sort of seems like she was looking for any excuse to break that out. Like a random dude in his Santa suit walks and she's like, fuck yeah, dude, break out the whiskey. But then Jason kind of ruins the whole relationship by robbing and shooting her. I don't know why you just don't go to the cops. I mean, she's obviously blackmailing you, right? You can tell he fired the gun because he jumped. That's how <laughs> he went. By the way, I should mention he buys a lottery ticket from the liquor store before he robs it. And later when he's in the diner, he scratches off the lottery ticket and it turns out he won. He won the lottery. So then the movie randomly cuts to a scene of David burying Sasha's body while Lips guy like cheers him on. Come on, Davey. You can dig better than that. Come on, faster. Dig, motherfucker. Come on. Take that hole. Move, move. See, that's what you get for not wanting to chop her up. Now you gotta dig a bigger hole. Hey, it's me editing this video. I know the lighting is ass. I wasn't gonna drag my lights out to film this. I did not realize when I was filming this video how fucking funny this scene is. There's so many little aspects that I think this might be the best scene in the whole movie. They're playing two Christmas songs on top of each other. Come on, Davey. You can dig better than that. Come on, faster. And then the dude, it's like, the dude is like almost interrupting himself. He's like delivering all of his lines like he's an NPC in Skyrim who's like glitched out and now is like reading all of his lines like back to back in order. He's just like rattling these off. Take that hole. Move, move. See, that's what you get. Like his lines are like almost overlapping each other. He starts saying the next line like before he's even finished delivering the one he's on. Oh my God, this movie is so fucking funny, dude. That scene is not important to the plot at all, which makes me think they put it in there because they knew I would think it was funny. Thanks guys. Anyways, Jason continues to stand outside the diner as Santa when he runs into Randall's wife and his daughter. Go ahead. What did she said? Well, uh, Santa's got his work cut out for him. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. And he gives Randall's wife the winning lottery ticket so she can pay for her daughter's medical bills. That's a very nice thing for a guy to do, especially for a guy who just committed felony murder. So then there's another totally random scene that isn't important at all, where the carolers from earlier find Chris's dead body. They just crowd around him and start singing again. That doesn't, that has no import on the plot whatsoever. They, I don't know why that's in there. What about Randall? How's he doing in jail? Not well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh oh. I cannot believe that they put that in the movie. Oh, jeez. Okay, so then without warning, this movie just starts showing an alternate ending to the movie, which has not even ended yet, as far as I'm aware. It just starts showing like the good endings to all these different stories that we've seen so far. Like in this one, Jason decides not to rob and kill this lady. His facial expression, it's like, it's like he just learned a valuable lesson. Huh, I guess the meaning of Christmas is an armed robbery. And in this one, Randall doesn't get framed for murder and kill himself in jail. Oh no. They took still images from other scenes and just put a door, a JPEG of a door on the sides of the frame. That's the that's the scene of earlier where she's in the living room and that's when he's in the office getting fired They just flipped it 180 degrees. Oh My god, that's so funny. Did they not know how this movie was gonna end when they shot the movie to answer my own question? They most certainly did not David's good ending is like the weirdest and most confusing one of all
Well, I could get the door, but what if the firewood does something interesting while I'm up? Okay, I did not need to see that sculpture of a child's ass. And the movie ends with a good ending to Chris's story. And let me just say, this is some of the weirdest editing I've ever seen in a movie. He wanted to see you just one last time. This is about dad. Is that the same tree? You didn't even ask about him. You just want me to say that I was wrong. There's nothing I want from you. I might propose to her. A girl? Is that why you stopped by to tell me? We can fix this. No, Chris, wait! You teleported back into the diner, what the fuck? And then became slow motion. That was so weird. And that's how the movie ends. It doesn't explain what the point of those alternate scenes was. Like, was that just another way the movie could have gone? The movie just ends after 15 minutes of truly mind-boggling shit, closing it out with this absolute butchery of editing, and it's like, yeah, I think we answered all the major questions. What a confusing way to end a movie. I went into this movie expecting it to be so, so bad. And it was, don't get me wrong. But the real twist was that somehow, there was actually some creativity to how it was structured. Some of the acting was legitimately good, and some of it was hilariously bad, but yet the editing and the sound design were like middle school skit that you have to film for social studies level of quality. I think the moral of the story is, I found a great place to find more insane movies to make fun of, and that is the greatest Christmas gift of all. And also, Halloween. Merry Christmas, I guess. Merry Christmas to all. And to all a good night.